Competition is intensifying. Competition among companies and particularly competition among nations to have the best production ecosystem. When we say manufacturing, we mean the entire chain of production of goods. If you look at your mobile phone, it's made out of plastic and glass and chips and such. But the most important component of your mobile phone is the knowledge and the know-how. Manufacturing really can make a huge contribution to growth because it has a very easy set of stepping stones that once a country gets into it, it's very easy for it to diversify and continue into many things. And this is the history of our industry. Japanese started with the low cost, the Koreans started with the low cost, everybody started there and China started there. But you can't stop there because if you want to continue to develop the economy, you have to move to the high-end manufacturing without abandoning your low cost. China in the past was only a big market, then it started in manufacturing, then it invited others to manufacture themselves into China, and now they move more to the high-end innovation. So you see a clear policy development over the years. The biggest challenge now is to get the industry policy settings right. For the Manufacturing for Growth project, we interviewed CEOs around the world. We focused on six target countries, three developed economy nations, the United States, Germany and Japan, and three emerging economy nations, China, India and Brazil. Developed talent, having public and private partnerships in innovation. It's very important to actually connect R&D activities with manufacturing. Which is in itself in a state of uh, revolution. The big drivers, nanotechnologies, the new materials, robotics, artificial intelligence, 3D printing. This is transforming manufacturing across the world. We need to find new technologies, new ways to make the products of the future. One of the key challenges is to create and to maintain the best talent because manufacturing means innovation. So you need people who are very skilled, who are linked to universities. If you look at the Silicon Valley, why it leads the innovation, the technology industry in the world, because you have uh, top universities, you got great research institutions, and more importantly, you have top talents from around the world. When it comes to education and training, business has an enormous responsibility by itself. We could actually move and get more of an integrating part earlier into the school system in order to engage in a better way. And that is a responsibility both for business but also for policymakers. The new manufacturing policy could uh, create a tremendous positive impact on the growth of the economy. The challenge in India is implementation. In the auto industry in the United States, it was the combined forces of government, management, labor all working together and coming up with a solution that's creating jobs, that's creating success and high profitability for the companies because of this understanding that we're all in this together. NGOs, how to involve civil society and their interests, looking at environments, looking at work safety, how to involve the private sector and how to involve policymakers. Governments have to think of themselves as part of the supply chain of manufacturing. They are the ones responsible for the power, for the water, for the roads, for the urban transport that workers are going to use. So collaboration between the doers and the policymakers and the government is essential. Going forward, our hope is that this work will be useful for policymakers to take a more integrated approach and to realize the powerful benefits of economic and social development that's driven through manufacturing.